It's uh, indeed a, a great uh, opportunity and a great privilege for me to welcome Professor R.P. Sharma Sahab in our today's Winter School program. The primary purpose of uh, this program is to encourage faculty members to be innovative in their teaching, in their pedagogy, and in their overall approach towards management education. We are really fortunate that uh, our session is uh, being started with the blessings of uh, Professor R. P. Sharmaji. R. P. Professor R. P. Sharmaji is renowned uh, professor and uh, head management development program in Indian Institute of Foreign Trade. Indian Institute of Foreign Trade is a government of India institution to foster education in the field of international trade and commerce. Professor Sharma is a regular speaker at industry associations like FIEO, Federation of Indian Exports Organization, Ahmedabad Management Association, Vidarbha Industry Association, Export Promotion Councils, and various national and international forums like uh, the industries forums from Tanzania, Kenya, and Zimbabwe and other organizations. He has uh, contributed substantially uh, towards uh, management education, towards export import education. He has uh, written a lot of publications in these sectors. He holds a PhD in uh, management education from prestigious Samuel Sukharia University of Udaipur. He is a member of the advisory board of various corporates, including uh, uh, Eureka Forbes, NIS Sparta, and advisory board of many, many other business organizations. Today, we have a special agenda in inviting Professor R.P. Sharma for a discussion with us. Professor Sharma has uh, taught me also and I have seen that he is a very, very popular professor. If he is teaching, the students really find it very, very interesting and appealing to attend his classes. Nobody wants to miss his sessions. What is the secret behind that? He aptly speaks in one line. Don't teach, let them learn. But let us understand from his own words how he shapes his uh, teaching pedagogy, his teaching methodology, that these sessions become really interesting, stimulating, and uh, exhilarating for all the participants. So, uh, Professor Sharma, may I request you to share your insights from your long academic journey. Professor Sharma. And yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, uh, Professor Tilok. Yes. yes. Uh, it's my privilege to be with you interacting today. It's your generosity acknowledging me as a teacher when you were in your formative years. Uh, I happen to be your senior that way. So, uh, am I visible, audible? Yes, you are audible. Excellent. Yes. So as you aptly said, you know, I welcome everyone uh, who is joining us today and those who will be watching it later. Uh, yes. It is uh, not a coincidence. Uh, you know, I have been thinking while, you know, right from the days when we were learning ourselves and we are still learning. Yes. But I'm talking of uh, those days when we were students. So, yes. you know, it was always... Uh, uh, you know, a, a thought process that how is it that our teachers can teach us better? Yes. Yeah. And and then I happen to be uh, become a teacher myself. And I know that first day when I had to take a session and it was, you know, too much of hard work, a lot of mugging up, a lot of uh, remembering from the courts and, uh, you know, uh, high high amount of nervousness. So, pressure. Uh, pressure. And, <laughs> and, 
yes and you know let me first acknowledge you know certain realities and one should never uh, be away from them it's better to accept those facts yes. and even today uh, despite being a professional facilitator or a teacher uh, i feel that some amount of nervousness is part of or should be a part of a professional's life because yes, yes. if we are not nervous facing any audience whether mm. be it a students be it colleagues or any peer group then we take things for granted and you know we don't deliver to the best of our capacity and understanding yes yes so so you know um, it is a coincidence uh, the log ji that after yes. my uh, very small stint at the institute of management studies bikaner Mm. uh i happened to join a, uh, you know the corporate the industry uh, career mm. and having worked there in sales and marketing domains i understood that the way learning happens or teaching happens in the b schools is not really the way it should happen yes so you think right? that uh, this is not the right way or whatever is taking Absolutely. place yes Absolutely. So what should, what is what should be the right approach? So the why I uh, felt that is not the right way because uh, when I joined the industry, mm. the industry also sent this message that what you learnt during B school may not be applicable here, and I could feel that. Right. Why? Because uh, a job in sales and sales was never taught. Yes. Managing sales was taught. Sales management as a course is taught, but. i didn't become a sales manager simply because i studied sales management <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so we learned the strategic management you know so i could understand uh, pretty well what is a strategic management and everything uh, being a first class student but i also learned that you know you are not asked to formulate any strategies or if you ever try then the seniors they will tell you that you know you have time uh, for that spend a decade minimum and then think of strategic management so so everything you know fell on the face and and nothing works in fact you know the the four p's or any big talk or the jargon or whatever they basically the industry the uh, where our output is absorbed yeah yes. uh, they are asked for certain key result activities or deliverables which are measurable and and you know uh, if a person is able to achieve or accomplish those goals then somebody is successful otherwise despite my um, my being most brilliant student in the class mm. i could feel that i was floundering i was about to get drowned and things like that which made me realize uh, deeply that oh the way i learned probably is not going to work in the industry so so the b school education pedagogy or the uh, not the curriculum per se but the way things are being delivered or taught or way the students learn that should change means the teaching pedagogy the way we teach yes. should be completely changed should be completely transformed yes. you mean to say so yes. uh, you have uh, put the uh, spot on the right point that is the teaching pedagogy needs to be changed and uh, you said that uh, we need to make the students really ready for the industry so i would like to know from you your own experiences about how you try to uh, impart the management education to your students so that uh, they could become industry ready looks like my video is frozen now right yeah so i think i must join again because it wasn't visible to you earlier too yeah uh, but uh, voice was coming to... clearly voice was uh, very yeah, clear but can i can i just uh, log out and rejoin what yeah I yeah do? most well yeah one second then give me uh, just yeah time. yeah Uh, dear participants uh, the agenda of the winter school is very simple we all realize that management education needs to be changed we all understand that management education should adapt itself change itself it should really deliver and by delivering i mean 
the outcome of the management education should be such that the student should be ready to become real corporate executives or to become entrepreneurs. This should happen through management education and we should learn from those who are actually doing it. And therefore, we are listening to Professor R. P. Sharmanji how management so, education can transform itself. Now we are able to see you very clearly. Voice is very clear. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. So I'm back. Yes. So, you know, uh, then Professor Trilog, then what happened was that I was uh, getting an opportunity to be uh, part of the NIS group, National Institute of Sales. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was part of NIIT and that school practiced something very different, discovery learning. So, okay, discovery learning. You know, yeah. So discovery learning means that don't teach at all and let the participants learn on their own pace. Yes. And if they are interested, they will learn. Yes. And and then I, from my career in sales training, I happen to be a teacher again after 12, 13 years of industry experience. Mm -hmm. So so by that time, I precisely knew that uh, the new MBA recruits when they join the industry, uh, they basically can be more successful if they are allowed to learn at their own pace and in a different way. So how do you structure uh, it? So I'm I mean, coming uh, to that. Yes. I'm coming to that. I'm just giving a background. Yes. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, the interest in the pedagogical innovations and tools. Mm -hmm. So one very interesting way is, uh, is that you know, basically, when we try to teach all my faculty colleagues, they might agree. Yes. Uh, then we feel that most of the responsibility, the onus is on our shoulders yeah. as teachers. We want to right? deliver. Uh, so the first thing that we tried doing was completely disown the responsibility point blank on the very first day. Wow. Okay. Now, this is, you know, uh, uh, a situation which many of us may not be comfortable. Mm -hmm. But when we can be comfortable doing this only when we know our subject thoroughly and when we are not afraid of the students asking us questions from uh, any aspect, any area. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying that the student only should control the class because then it will be complete anarchy. Chaos. Right? Chaos. So, you know, it's one to many, the teacher to the students, it's an interaction pattern that we need to design much before we walk into the class. Mm -hmm. So more than, more than, you know, memorizing or preparing the session, we should devote a lot of time to the class dynamics. How am I going to handle it? How can I, how can I transfer my nervousness onto the students? Mm -hmm. I still do that today. Okay. For example, uh, those who join my class in sales, I ask them that, have you, do you have experience of working in sales? Uh, what do you think then you are responsible for in sales? So a couple of questions. And then, you know, you wait for the students to raise hands, right? But it so happens initially when I wasn't prepared for this, that, you know, if the students don't respond, then silence becomes threatening. Yes. Okay. So we as teachers, my first message is that we must start tolerating silence. Okay. That we should silence not, is uh, feel, feel that the silence is uh, dangerous. Yes. Not dangerous at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Couple of questions and we can read the, just as a thermometer reads the temperature in the environment, we should read the faces of the students, mm -hmm. particularly when we are walking into the class for the first time. Yes. Yeah. So, and then our body language, you know, is, is rather very important. So that should be confident, but at the same time, we need to look into the eyes of the people and then ask them certain pointed questions, you know. So for example, uh, did you watch any advertisements today, this morning, or do you remember any advertisement that uses an emotional appeal or something like that? Any question which is, okay, or can you draw some analogy between sports and cricket and or football and sales or this or that or whatever mm -hmm. so then you know it would be good for 30 seconds to allow one or two students or some of the students to, to respond start to open up to respond yep yep then yep. how do you make them uh, the driver of the next uh, one hour 
Yeah, so I'm coming to that. Yeah. So let me give another example. Services marketing is a course that I teach. And yes. I simply throw one statement that mm. we live in a services economy. Yes. Now, this everybody knows. This is a general statement. Right. Mm. But then I'm not able to complete my second statement sentence also. I say that, uh, I want to say that X percentage of the GDP comes from services. Mm. But I rather make it a question and after the second statement belongs to the students. The, we live in a services economy, guys, uh, any wild guess what percentage of our GDP is contributed by the services sector? And then the students are start guessing. Silence. Yes. Silence. Silence. And Silence then let them, and, and there may be no answer, there uh, may no be answer. some answers, right. there mm. may be wrong answers, so there may be whatever answers. Even if there is a wrong answer, I'll not thrash that boy. <laughs> okay, same way, sales, Everybody lives by selling something. Everybody means everybody. You don't have to be in sales to sell something. Then yeah. if I say that, and then I ask, do you agree? If you agree, please raise your hands. Then yes. I ask them, how are you selling? Mm. Uh, how, how is, what does your father do? So he says that my father is a lawyer. So you think he sells something. So then he say, thinks and he says, yeah, my father sells his ideas to the client and this and mm. that and to the magistrate and blah, blah. Mm. Then, you know, by that time, somebody else has got an idea and this guy says, sir, I see politicians selling. Mm. Then, then, you know, the poly, when I, I ask him, can you elaborate? Then, then it appears, then the class understands that his constituency is, is like a territory in sales, something mm. like that. Mm. So this is how we allow some digression and, mm. you know, maybe chaos also beginning, but, but with confidence. So create chaos and let there be noise in the class. In fact, a lot of teachers, they love silence. Please maintain silence. Now this is ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> okay. So if there is a chaos, then you say, oh, if you think that, is there a confusion guys? Do you think that we would like to sort it out? Would you like to gain clarity on this? Then, you know, all of them are on the same platform. So you tell us now what we are confused about this and that and blah, blah. Okay, like that. So some telling can be there. So what I'm saying is that we can transfer our nervousness by asking certain questions to the class. Okay, that gives the a faculty, a particularly a new faculty, more confidence in that case. And uh, then what uh, do you do? You yeah, think yeah, uh, the students are able to take leadership roles through these processes? And yeah. uh, so that comes maybe, a little later. Yeah, yeah. After leadership maybe roles. after a few few days, probably it starts something like that. Mm. So what I'm saying is that this process, look, this builds some kind of an engagement. Yes. And, and then we give them a message that, you know, uh, the sessions will be interactive like this. Yes. And then we can tell them point blank that don't expect me to walk in and bore you to death by using a PPT or talking to you for 40 minutes or one hour or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Just because you are a student in this class that doesn't give you the license that you can ask me questions and make my life miserable. I'm here to make yours miserable in the class and you please make mistakes so that your life is smooth and better later on once you right. join the industry. <laughs> Mm. So we bust certain myths and we tell them that, look, the industry is not looking for your qualification, the MBA. Uh, mm. MBA is part of a surplus society today. Mm. Okay. A lot of sameness floating. Anybody, everybody is an MBA. Mm. So, so, so then we also ask them and, you know, we make, we should make students think that, you know, the industry is looking for a manager, uh, somebody who is a leader, somebody who is capable, somebody who is competent, somebody this, somebody that. So th these kind of questions, and then they start thinking. So basically, our biggest role as a faculty is to make them think. Okay. Yes. Leadership leadership roles. What well, people can be into leadership roles only when they start thinking. Right. Right. Without thinking, you know, it will be followership. Yes. So engagement and thinking are the first grounding steps. principles of steps towards leadership. Yes. 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 Right. Then somewhere we can even ask, check with them that, okay, if you want to be a true professional, who do you consider to be a professional? So somewhere in the discussion, they say, sir, doctors are professional, chartered accountants are professionals. Mm -hmm. So we ask them, okay, what do, why do you say that they are professionals? So guys, you know, they basically talk about degrees that, sir, MBBS, MDMS, yeah, mm -hmm. 
तो मैं कहता हूँ मेरे पास है यार आई एम एन एम बी बी एस एम डी आई एम ए कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट आई एम ए गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट फ्रॉम समवेयर फाइन But I haven't done even a single heart surgery. If I open a clinic in your city, you think if somebody happens to be a prospective client for me, will they come to me? I haven't done even a single heart surgery. I say. So when I put this condition, they say no, no, sir, we don't want to come to you. Then I again reinforce. But I'm a gold medalist. Come to me, Baba. <laughs> they say no, we'll not come to you. So then they'll say, then I'll say, okay, why? What is lacking in me? So the students only they come out and they say experience. Mm. experience now i tell them that i have experience i have done 500 heart surgeries ek nahi so nahi 500 kiya maine ye alag baat hai ki usme se 498 bhagwan ko pyare ho gaye so then i say that now you think i have experience or i don't have experience they say sir you have experience but we will still not come to you <laughs> we will not come to you so i said so what are you looking for they say we are looking for success rate uh you are looking for success rate as a student or as a patient you think industry is not looking for success rate <laughs> okay you think leadership roles are not looking for success rate so mm-hmm. then this is how we transition them then you know if you really want to be a true leader or true professional so what is then this doctor should be like then they say no this doctor should be competent this doctor should be skilled so this is how we build the ground for skills learning so i say okay skills fine skills but the skills do you think which is which are the skills so again basic examples they know swimming is mm. a skill driving is a skill mm. i say fine i'll give you lectures 30 hours so your typical course in a marketing is a 30 hour course i yes. teach you 30 hours a swimming course so then i ask somebody in the class only oh, who knows swimming so you draw that student out pull the student out how how either out okay explain one style of swimming that you use so number one this guy will find it difficult to put it into words because doing is easy but how to explain how do i yes. swim yes i can tie it uh, i i still bring such kind of typical difficult uh, uh, cases like for example somebody wearing a tie so i ask how many of you know how to tie a tie knot so they raise hands everybody raises hands most of them they say i can i tie it everybody so i say okay one of you please you come out and now you explain the class how do you tie a tie knot So then this guy, some guy explains, and some guy says, "Sir, give me a tie. I can show it. I cannot explain, or I can explain, but it will be difficult for them to understand. Something like that." Mm. So then we draw a corollary and an analogy that okay, thirty hours of swimming. This guy is explaining you this stroke, uh, this particular style of swimming, butter, st- butter, butterfly style. and now i ask you to take you to the pool and ask you to jump those who don't know how to swim can you so you know you know you build strong engagement and the participants are with you then they see no no i can't swim unless i do it myself unless i unless i walk into the water unless i uh, wet my feet and things like that and that is where we build the rational for summer training projects live projects internships industry interface etc yes the students realize the importance of these aspects through these discussions Absolutely. what do you do about uh, the students who are little bit uh, dif- difficult learners means those students who do not participate in interactive sessions in the classes do you happen to Two face such students yes absolutely this happens yeah but as i told you about the surplus society sameness floating institutes like uh, iift or an iim class basically you will see that you know most of the students they qualify some kind of a test group discussion personal interview so more or less they are plus minus some degrees but you know they are almost at the same level but yes i quite agree with you that some people are introverts and they don't really open up or show yes. their hands or respond to the questions or yes, things yes. like that they are mm-hmm. laid back now that happens so in those cases what we do is we start calling them by names mm-hmm. name sounds like music into the ears mm-hmm. and a good teacher should be able to spot early on who are the students who over participate and who do not participate at all mm-hmm. so knowing them personally and then talking them outside the class but then telling them in advance so that they become comfortable that today i didn't see you speaking tomorrow i'll open the class with you okay 
So when I open the class, I am going to ask you to summarize the session. Now, this is pretty early a warning or information to the student. Still, I agree, it may happen that the student may not turn up the next day because, you know, I ask the student to do something possible or the student may come late. Okay. Yes. So we do this yes. with a couple of students so that I'm going to ask you to do this. Tomorrow, I'm going to have some insight from you on this side. I, I don't see you participating. Now, these things should happen privately, not in public in front of the entire class. Right. Okay. This is the way. And then you see over a period of time, you know, a couple of weeks and sessions, those mm -hmm. students, they rather, you know, in fact, they participate much more. They, they start gaining confidence. And they are the students who thank you for their lifetime because they say, sir, I was an introvert and because of you, now I'm completely transformed. Yes. In fact, they are the students who rate me five out of five. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about class feedback, but I'm talking about my emotional engagement with them, even outside the class. Mm -hmm. Still, if there is one of kind of an exceptional example, then, then maybe they are undergoing some kind of a trauma or a personal problem or something, something in their life because of which they are not able to. Yes, in yes. fact, when we, when we start talking to them and when we understand their problem, just listen to them and counsel them. In fact, they open up and they tell you everything about them. Mm -hmm. And they are my closest students. So those students who are the weakest in the class are closest to me after 15 days of my engaging them in the class. Yes, yes. Sir. So that is the real uh, and uh, most important tool to transform ordinary students into extraordinary leaders of tomorrow. Because uh, we have understood uh, from Sharma Sam that it is uh, easier for us to motivate the students and engage them in the learning process. And this is how we can. So we'll today try to summarize the entire discussion that we have had today with Professor Sharmaji. That first of all, so it is our one duty. Second. So, yeah. Professor, so uh, here I was saying that, you know, more than teaching and trying to display our expertise. Yes. You know, a teacher needs to be more empathizing. Yes. A teacher, empathy is very important here. Okay. And a teacher needs to needs to involve them. And a teacher needs to be listening. A teacher needs to be asking questions, expecting students that they should ask questions. Well, that's not going to happen. Let me tell you why that's not going to happen. So I've been studying during primary school when students ask questions, the teachers shut them up. Yes. Okay. So yes. Like I was very naughty and I can now recollect that my teacher punished me because I, I used stood to up and questions. asked the question. Yes. yes. So, so when that happens, our educational system is built like that. Right. So there, you know, when this, it's a challenge that, that if somebody studies for 14 years that way, and then during the post-graduation, we ask, expect students to turn into, you know, uh, co-producers of the learning experience in the it class. That's happen. not going to happen. <laughs> so, yes. uh, yeah, over to you. Yes. So we have uh, today tried to understand the most important tool for teachers. Don't teach the students, let them learn. This is a wonderful mantra by Professor R.P. Sharmaji based on his own experiences. He has given us a few tips which I would like to summarize. From the day one, you don't try to speak. You don't try to give lectures. You put some questions to the students. Let the students engage in discussions, dialogue. Do not prove yourself to be a source of authority. Let the students evolve through their discussion. This evolution, this discussion may be slightly chaotic in the beginning, but at that time you have to play the role of a moderator. Bring the moderator inside your class. Don't try to put very strict discipline that keeps shut down. Encourage the students to speak out. Encourage the students to ask among themselves some questions. And encourage the student to explore some topic on their own. The answers may be wrong, but don't try to 
I mean, uh, quieten them, encourage them to learn through making mistakes. The students will make mistakes and learn out of it. This, this process should continue every day and identify those students who are not able to participate, who are not able to speak. Talk to them personally and give them a responsibility that tomorrow I want to see you speak more often. This kind of encouragement will help the students to start speaking. And this kind of exercises, when you do repeatedly, will convert your students into outstanding leader of the future. Professor Sharma sir, have I tried to do the justice with regard to summarizing these sessions? Any more points left out, do you think? Excellent. I think you covered up everything that I was trying to talk about. Yes. So the only thing is, uh, you know, slightly like, we have executive classes also at IFT. Yes. So in the executive program, you know, people come with diverse set of skills and experience. So they can teach each other. Yes. Synergosy is when a student also can teach learn and from a each teacher other. can learn. Hmm. Absolutely. So not only the students learning from each other, but when we as professors walk into the class, despite our use experience, still, hmm. you know, we should walk as a student to the class. Yes. No harm in telling the students that I'm also a learner like you. And if there is a new perspective, I would also like to uh, thank you, you for, and we should yes. sometime, you know, when they make a good contribution, yes. it is good and it requires humility to accept. But I like to tell them that, you know, this is a learning for me and I quite appreciate this new addition of knowledge for me by the class today. So then the entire class feels good about it. Mm. that they taught their professor also. <laughs> so yes, yes. this is interesting. I appreciate. Uh, so this, uh, I think we can learn from every student. Uh, student can learn from us and we can also learn from them. There are some things which anyone can bring to the classroom. A, a person coming from village can share his experiences, some unique experiences of villages, which we may not have experienced. So we should Absolutely. definitely encourage people to share their experiences, their Absolutely. worldview, like, you know, and that will uh, help. Yes. Like Professor Jain, when we studied, uh, digital marketing wasn't there. Yes. Just was not there. Hmm. And, and over a period of time, we would have been become redundant and obsolete if we wouldn't have been upgrading ourselves. Yes, yes. Today, I see that a student who walks into the class has some internship, even during engineering or whatever qualification, that yes. they handled some social media marketing of some brand or some project. Yes, yes. And I can bet and guarantee that they know sometimes more than me because they have applied that to the digital marketing situation. Yes. Now... Now, given an opportunity, those students bring a new perspective and, you know, what I know today about digital marketing is something that I learned from my students or they inspired me. So I learned outside also. Yes. Like yes, yes. Very good. This kind of, uh, I mean, uh, asking the student to share their experience of digital marketing or doing a brand review or during uh, a post uh, purchase uh, review of the product helps them in sharing their experiences and which will be a good learning for everyone to understand the insights of the customers. So, so in, uh, one of the, in, yes. in one of the training programs, in one of the training programs, I was explaining social selling using LinkedIn. Yes. And, and I, it was just this question and so I asked if somebody uses this and one of the participants said, I use it extensively. And voila, I just asked him that, can you explain how you use it so that others can also do it their, your way? Yes. And he took three, four minutes and very interesting insights he shared that how does he build his professional brand and how does he engage his future clients and things like that. Mm -hmm. A couple of techniques and I was also listening, entire class was listening and wonderful. You know, I thought, yes. I also can do something. So one or two techniques that he was practicing, which I'm not practicing. Yes. So this is how enrichment can happen. Well, but I'm talking here about the executive class, not of the for the freshers. Yes, yes, yes. 
definitely. And uh, slowly and slowly, we can enable these students to be more communicative, to be able to share their experiences. So uh, thank you, Professor Sharma. We have benefited immensely from your insights. And this discussion will enable us to plan ahead and uh, be more innovative in the way we teach with our students, interact with our students, and create a learning environment for them. So I wish to thank you from the core of my heart. It's, thank it's you my very pleasure. Much. It's my pleasure. Uh, you, are, long you, are, you, are, you are you are the, you are one of the greatest teachers I have seen, and uh, your uh, it is your capabilities that whatever today we are, the credit goes to people like you. It is because of you that today we are able to perform well in our lives. And uh, it is my uh, fortune that uh, I've been your student and uh, I've benefited a lot from your expertise and will continue to benefit from your expertise in future also. Thank you, Sir Marsa. Thank you very much. And dear thank participants, you, thank you, your humility. Yeah. If there is any question from any one of you, you can also ask the questions before we close the session. I think there is no question. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll send you a letter of appreciation by post to your race directors. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. The closing out.